Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Saga Saturdays. Um, this episode, Angelo and I are going to dive into the assembly and how the tolerances stack up and we've created a couple different assemblies that show the min and the max and how parts interrelate. So we're going to talk about that today. So in the Saga pen, we have this epic mechanism that's a ball lock mechanism. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of super tight tolerances in there. There's three ball bearings, uh, the ceramic bearings, the best we can get. And how everything fits together is super critical and actually quite challenging, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely challenging. What do you think, Angelo? I love this thing. <laughs> so we're right now, we're stacking up our tolerances. We've isolated our maximum sized components for the button and the sliding sleeve. Then we've isolated our minimum size components. And what we're doing is we're stacking up the assembly so that we have the smallest diameter button with the largest internal diameter uh, sleeve. So when they go together, you're gonna have the loosest stack up between them, right? Okay, the sloppiest fit. The sloppiest fit. Right. And then we do the opposite with our minimum uh, sliding sleeve and our maximum button to see how the tightest stack would be. So we've already engineered this on the computer. Right. Right. And everything on the computer is perfect. Yeah. But then you make it in real life. Exactly. And so we want to validate the tolerances that we've assigned in order to ensure that when we're making these parts, they're going to fit together no matter what. So when we measure them at the machine and then just off the machine, we can stack them up, make a ton of parts. Yeah. And we know that they're all going to fit together. And I dare say that the most people would never feel the difference between the two mechanisms. They're extremely, the tolerance band is extremely tight, so there's right. very little, um, there's very little change between them. But it's, if we go out of this, it might not work. Right. Right. And so. that's what we noticed when we made the first 30 pens, like the very first batch, was that uh, all of a sudden parts weren't fitting together, and we'd have to put them aside and not know what was wrong. And then we dug deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And that was one of the hesitations with bringing the whole project back was like the time you and I are spending now yeah. is, is figuring out what we can do, what we can yeah. get away with and, and how big and small each dimension is allowed to be. Yeah, this is the R&D stage essentially where we're developing our, our engineering now for yeah. our, our tolerance stacks. Now that we're gonna move past this, then it's dialing in our efficiencies on the machine, our, the way we're gonna manufacture it scheduling the rest of that so yeah the tools we use and the methods and there's there's yeah. always little things like polish that surface or you know yeah. use a sharp tool here instead of a worn out one or yeah something I've learned over you know the past 10 years of doing lathe work is that as much as you want to make a part exactly on size there has to be a tolerance range yeah. that's allowable otherwise you're gonna have 90% scrap yeah you're never gonna you're never gonna always hit zero right. um, and if you think you're hitting zero there's more dust, you know, there's decimal places behind that yeah, that you're yeah, never exactly. meeting anyway. Exactly. So there's, you have to give yourself a realistic range and you have to work within that. Um, so we've kind of figured that out now. We know what we've engineered will function. Yeah. So now we can be comfortable in making that and essentially establishing our um, quality control methods to check yeah. every part repeatedly. Well, so uh, we have quickly. to know what to measure, exactly. when to measure it, yeah. what the specs are, what's the min max, but like, yeah. Like, I mean, this component, it's, it looks simple, but there's, I don't know, probably at least three dimensions, three critical dimensions that yeah, we have to check exactly. on that. Yeah, we've got the diameter here, which is very critical. The surface finish is going to matter for us yeah. in the future. Because that surface finish, you can actually feel it while you go like this. Yeah. So we're going to brush it, we're going to polish yeah, it. We're going to polish these. The location of these shoulders yeah. is very critical. That's going to determine if it locks in place, if right, there's right. you know sponge to it. Overall length is critical, mainly to the groove to this face here, because right. that's when it pops up, that's where it's stopping essentially. When it goes down, that's the distance we're coming down. So that's determining your stick out and the entire function of the mechanism. Yeah, that can easily determine how far the tip sticks out of the end of the pen. Um, and we assembled one the other day or this morning that the tip did not stick out very far. And we're like, what's going on? It turns out the tube length was, what was it 50 thou off or something? Yeah, it was one of the scrap tubes. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't made our production tubes yet, or right. so we're just using our, our scrap assemblies. Yeah, so we've got a couple ideas for the next batch of tubes to make them a bit better. Yeah, so now I'm gonna take 
the minimum, so this is our loosest assembly. Okay. And we're gonna put that together. John's pen, so we're gonna protect it a little bit. Yeah. You're doing that so that the clip doesn't scratch. Exactly. And if you guys are taking these apart at home, definitely yeah. do that. And that's our loosest assembly. Still so feels good. What do you feel the difference between loose and, and tight? It's extremely. It's you have there, to right? have them both side by side to really like to yeah. really feel it. Um, the difference in the stack would be one is uh, it's one thou and one thou, so it's a two thou okay. range, right? So we're going four thou down to two thou, I believe. We've got to pull out the drawings and look at that. But essentially, <coughs> we've got our tightest assembly, which would be bringing the balls in closest to the diameter, right? Right. And our loosest ones is le leaving room for the balls to move around, which really isn't much. No. Uh, this one has a tiny bit more compression there. Okay. So when it's in the fully on position, you, you can move it like a few thou at most? Yeah, you can feel it move just a little bit. That's just compressing the spring. Yeah, whereas this one doesn't doesn't move at all. Now we gotta decide if aesthetically you want it, that's exactly where we want it to sit. Yeah, so between different assemblies, like your old one here, this is from last summer. The slider, this piece that, that you pull down on, notice that the top part of that slider and then the next part on the inside, the slider doesn't go flush up with the top, which is fine, but on the new design, See if you can see the difference side by side. So on our old one, essentially the internal, we didn't measure everything on this, right? No, we just made parts and we fit were in together. such a rush before yeah. Blade Show, So we fit them together, fine. we made sure they functioned, everything functioned well, yep. but there was some fit ups involved. And we know now that the, this, this sliding sleeve and this one here are slightly out of tolerance. So on the new design, this sits higher up and flush with this when it's up all the way Whereas which is which is how it's designed in the computer designed. exactly and this one here is not flush it's just there so i believe the internal inside here the outside is the same but the inside of the, the position of that of the uh chamfer that the balls sit on yep. is probably shifted a little bit okay which explains why that's in a different position and also why when you when you actuate them this comes down lower. It does, and yeah. Up higher. It's amazing how much tolerancing and mechanical work we're putting into these. Yeah. Like, not it's not even the fun stuff, like coming up with different patterns for the slider yeah, no, or like making it work really well. Anodizing colors or anything yeah. like that. It, this is this is all behind the scenes stuff, which I'm super happy to share with you guys. Yep. Um, just know and appreciate. It's it's been an incredible amount of work, and we love it. It's what we love to do. Um, but it's been a good challenge. I love yeah. it. Like we could just throw them together, call it a day. I'm sure they'll all function okay, but you're going to get a lot of variance between them. Yep. Um, some might not work after a while. And then some might not assemble the same way. Yeah, so we were st sticking the assembly guy, you know, we want you to put together this many pens and, yeah. you know, <laughs> Sky, get over here. You only put together, you know, eight. Um, I had problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we want to make sure everything coming off will function for sure. So, yep. Awesome. So what's next? I mean... This was kind of a big milestone for us. Was yeah. we had to make four different components, min max yep. uh, tolerancing, and kind of remember how we did it eight months ago, uh, yeah. and now we've done that. So what's next? Next is we're making about ten to fifteen of them. So and then we're gonna start putting together some pens. Yes. We got to make some tubes. <laughs> uh, we do have some uh, process changes involved in all of that yeah we've got lists and lists of, of things we want to tweak and cut this way instead of that way or dial in the thread here yeah, exactly. or uh, figure out the min max of this and that uh, there's a lot of parts I think I think there were 14 parts in the pen and we make like nine of them or yeah. something yeah and the rest the, are like ball bearings and clips yep even custom tips were in yep very cool I'm super excited um, we should. I, I'm not going to give any time estimates as to when we're going to sell these things, but soon, like weeks or short months, anyway. Yeah, should be soon. We should have, I don't know, like ten. Yeah. Ready soon. That yeah, we like can put up. It'd be nice to make ten. You're making ten parts now. You know they're going to be good. We have some from before, like the tips that that are probably good from yep. from last summer, um, and then just make more. Yeah, then we gotta yeah dial things down because it's yep. these are all time-consuming parts. Like that's uh, 
on the sleeve it's eight minutes this eight minutes for that guy yeah we we can cut some time from that yeah, i'm sure but for that. Um, that's what you do it's the first thing you just you make it how you know how to make it no matter how long it takes and then you, you pare it down from there right yeah custom tooling like you got yep. the pc cutters that's going to save a lot of time there yep so we make it yeah with what we know and with the tooling that we have we inspect it with the equipment that we have and then moving forward we know what we need we know what inspection equipment um, what tooling we want and yep. any process changes so that way we can trim it down because it's all pretty time consuming like the clip is half hour machine time almost yeah yeah and uh, you know another 10 minutes there another you know so it adds up into it's gonna be a challenge but it's I love it. yeah it should be doable and I mean as much as I would love to just stop everything and make a thousand pens right now and sell them to all you guys um, it's just not possible like for us to make 10 but in the next few weeks it's gonna be a challenge because we've been running the lathe non-stop um, well during working hours anyway yeah and then a lot of night runs but non-stop making just knife parts just screws and pivots and LBS's and bearings and it's been great trying to stock up for the next few months but then you make other parts and that next few months comes closer and then yep. we're gonna need another lathe yep soon we will soon we will um, so that's all part of the big long-term plan but um, for now let's establish the process let's get it dialed and know that we can do it right yeah well thank you my lovely co-host you're welcome <laughs> Thanks for watching Saga Saturdays, everyone. We also started a bit of Fixture Fridays. Might even do a Macro Monday, just for fun. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to share and talk about, and it's really fun for us to do that with you guys. So uh, I appreciate you uh, tagging along on the journey here. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more. Later. Later.